I have a four or five part in-depth series on working with battery in depth, but a lot of people seem to like the quick start tutorials that I create. So I figured I would try to put one together for battery, a getting started in 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and see if we can cover all of the most essential fun functions that I think are going to help you out with creating your drum tracks with, uh, within battery. So let's go ahead and get started. We are at about 1015. We are at 1015. So we're going to go till 1035 and cover everything that you need to know to get started here. So first of all, in the left, we have a browser or a library and we're on the library tab currently. And then here we are on the kits and this is going to display all of the preset kits that come with battery four. We can scroll down and see all that is available. Any kit that we'd like to load, we would just double click and all of the cells will be populated with the samples in that kit. Now below that we have a filter. So if we're looking for sound effects, for instance, then it's going to show all of our sound effect kits. If we're looking for percussion, then we have a second tier that pops up and we can filter out even further. If we like the synthetic, then we can double click and load that kit. If I deselect, then we move back to just the percussion. If I deselect the percussion, that second tier goes away and we're back to all of our kits. Alternatively, we can type in um, a name and filter out in that way. If I click on the X, then we close out that search and return to showing everything. Now, next to the kits, we have a samples button. And so this is going to list all of the samples that are contained within those kits. And you can see we have quite a few to choose from. We can again filter out, say if we're looking for loops, we can select loops. If we're looking for vocal sounds, we can select that. And we're filtered out to all of the vocal sounds within loops of our samples. So if I deselect vocal, we move back up to loops, deselect loops. The second tier goes away and we're taken back to showing all of our samples. Now we also have a user tab where if we've created any kits ourselves, those will be listed here. We have the search feature here as well. Let's come back to the factory and the kits. And then so far we've been working with the library tab. We also have a files tab. And this is going to allow us to navigate our system directory so that if we click on this here, then we can say, come to our C drive and the users we've got Quanta. I'll go to my desktop, my Quanta folder on the desktop. And then here are all of my sounds and samples. And what I've done is I right clicked and uh, added that to favorites so that it's always going to be up top here and I can just click once to be taken directly to that. So if I come to the file path here and come back to say the Quanta, um, I can just click on sounds and samples and boom, I'm taken directly to that folder where I have all of my drum sounds. Now the one next to this is going to move us up one folder above. Okay. And if we'd like to remove any shortcuts that we've created up here, we can right click and uh, just take that out. Finally, in the browser section, we have a tab for automation working with our host, the host DAW that we're working in. We have MIDI control, and this is a bit beyond the scope of this quick start tutorial, uh, but you can check out the in-depth series uh, for more on that. Let's come back to the library tab and move on. Now, I'm not sure if I cover this. We have the magnifying glass that we can click to close out that browser. If we would like to just have the cells and the controls down below active, and we can even open up the browser within our DAW and come to the files and just drag sounds directly into battery that way as well. If that's the method we prefer to use. But I'm going to go ahead and click the magnifying to bring back our browser here. We then have access to creating new kits, opening kits, opening any recent kits that we've been working in, saving a kit and save kit as. Edit will take us to our preferences where we can work with different settings for a battery and how it will function. 
what else? The cell matrix, matrix, we can change the size. So if we'd like to work with 16 cells, we have a controller with 16 pads, and we're gonna create our own kit. We can just choose four by four. And we're gonna have four cells in the column here, and then four across in the row. And we have a variety of different sizes that we can choose from here. We can add rows, delete last row, add column, delete last column, and so on. We can access the battery manual here. Now we see the name of the currently loaded kit and we can navigate to the next and previous kits by clicking on these arrows here. We have a sync button and this is going to sync to our DAW, the tempo that we have set. Let me pull this to the side and we can see I'm currently set to 130 in the transport of my DAW. If I click and change that to 120, I'll press enter we could see battery follows along. If we deselect sync, then we can set this to a separate tempo if we'd like. Now, next we have this button here that's going to, basically, with while this is off, if I use my external controller and trigger our sounds, we see we remain on the controls for this pad here, or this cell. Now, if I activate this as I use my external controller. We then show the controls for whatever pad we are uh, pressing on our external controller. So that's what that is. This is going to give us control for how many voices are allowed to play back within battery. By default, that's gonna be on 32, but if we'd like more or less voices to play back, we can click hold and drag up or down. We then have a panic button. So if we have sounds that are out of control and we want them to stop, we can click this. Um, so if we had this one, for instance, if I click and release, it's gonna stop playback because our release time is set to 6.3 milliseconds. But if I increase that to seven seconds, press and release, I can click that to stop the playback. We then have our global volume control for battery. And at this point, we can move on to the cells here. Now, of course, we can trigger any sound by clicking. We can see that whenever a cell is the selected one, it has the brighter border around it. And if we right click, we have a lot of options here for the cell. We can add this, a sample, replace. This is just going to open up an explorer window on the PC at, or a finder on the Mac. Now we can render the cell in place. So if we perform some edits, say within the editor here, the editor tab, we can render that into place so that the edits will not be done in real time and we can save on CPU. We could load the cell, save cell, cut, copy, paste, traditional controls in most any application. We can delete the sample out of the cell. We can rename the cell and um, change the cell color. So if we'd like to make this green, we can do that. If at any time we'd like to return to the original color, we can choose to use the sample color and we're back to where we started. Now at the very bottom, we can choose, by default, these are all going to go to the master out of battery. And we can see that here, this is our master out um, but we do have the option to send these out to one of the four buses that are available within battery. So if I choose bus one, let's come back to the master. Here is our bus one and the other three buses. So now if I select bus one, we can see that this is a bit uh, highlighted, whereas the others are grayed out here because these are all going to main the master. If I change this back to the master, then that's grayed out because we're now sending it out here. Now let's come back to our main tab and we can even send this out to a direct out within our DAW. So these are all of the ones that are available within our DAW. I'm working with Studio One and I would actually need to come up above here and activate those other channels as well. 
So we've covered all of the settings in the contextual menu. Let's, what can we move on to now here? We have control for what portion of the sample that we'd like to play back by using the start and end markers here. So if I bring the end marker in, then we can hear that we're gonna stop our playback there. So these are pretty straightforward controls. We can click, hold, and drag up or down to zoom in on our sample. And if I pull to the right or left, then we navigate horizontally within our sample. Let's bring that all back into view. We can then tune our sample in semitones here. Okay, and when we're making use of the tune button here, then it's going to use the engine down below here. So So by default, it's gonna be in standard, but we can select vintage, and then we can choose from a S1200 or say an MP60. If I leave that on the S1200, oh, wait a minute, okay. Uh, so we need to, we're not making use of the tune. So let me change this back to the standard. We hear how that sounds. Let's lower that down, nine semitones. And then if we switch to the vintage, the S1200, the MP60. So it's gonna give you kind of that classic sound if that's what you would like. And you have a variety to choose from there. I'll come back to the standard and we can actually choose this to a stretch mode as well. So we have the option between sampler or stretch. And now next to the tune, we have reverse. So we can click and reverse our sample. We have the key range. This, these are the keys that will actually trigger our sample. So if we'd like to set these, we would click on this MIDI icon and then press the pad or key twice. And then now C1 is going to trigger our metal funk sound. So we have panning control. Uh, we have control for if we have any phasing issues and we have a discrete volume control for the individual sample here. And we, when we make adjustments to these parameters, if you notice up above, we have these gray bars that show up and it's gonna show you the adjustment that you're making. And you can see that only the metal funk one is being adjusted, but we can actually select a whole row by clicking on the letters to the side here. And in, in this way, if we adjust, you can see everything in that row will be adjusted. Now, we can also choose a particular column. So then in this way, we're adjusting the level for all of the samples in that column. All right, so moving on, we have our volume envelope for controlling our attack, decay, sustain. By default, we started off in a more complex setting here, but we have this button to the right that we can choose for a simpler version. And once we begin to adjust a, a control, this the power becomes active. You can see we have power buttons for some of these controls or parameters. Uh, and we can just click to power that on and off as well. We have a pitch envelope. So let's come to this longer sample, take the release up. So right now our pitch envelope is powered off, but say if we'd like to have that lower in pitch over time, we can take that down to, let's take that 
23 semitones. We have a decay to control how long it's going to take to, to get to that pitch down sound. We have a break control, and then this decay is going to determine how long it takes before it returns back to the original pitch. So now when I trigger this sample back, we're controlling that pitch for the sample over a period of time with these controls. And we start again as with the ADSR controls with this more complex mode, but we can click to the right for a more simple version if we'd like. I'm going to take that off. We have velocity, which is going to be at 100% by default, and this just makes use of the velocity on your external controller. If we take this down to 0%, then the sample is going to trigger back at full volume, no matter how hard or soft you're triggering with your pads. If we were to use the to pitch, then by default, the pitch is not... Let me, let me come to this one that I renamed. So no matter how hard or soft I press this, it, the pitch is not going to change. But if we raise this up, it, it changes in semitones. Depending on the velocity information coming in, it's, uh, supposed to change in pitch, but it is not so okay so the the pitch envelope needs to be active if i turn that off Okay, so it's the two volume needs to be at zero. So I'm triggering softly here. We have a lower pitch. And then the harder I trigger, the pitch goes up here. So that is that. And we took a look at the engine. We have a filter. We can filter out. Let's, we can filter out our highs or the lows. We have a basic compressor. And we have sends for delay and reverb. So if I send this to the delay. Okay, and the delay, you can find that on the master section. And we can see the controls for the delay are here. We can adjust the feedback, the time, damp, and panning. And the reverb, we can add some of that. And again, the reverb, you'll find that on the master. We have settings here and we can choose between convolution, which is here by clicking on this waveform icon or algorithmic by clicking here. Let's come back to the main tab and take those off. And we've only got about two more minutes left. So here we have effects that we can add saturation, lo-fi, filter and EQ. These are all pretty straightforward. We have a more advanced compressor. And we have a few options we can choose here between Pro, Solid Bus Comp, or Classic. And we have an area for controlling transients. And then any of these can be, we can reorder our effects chain by clicking on this grid here. So I could drag the lo-fi to be the first in this chain if we'd like. Any of these can be moved. Now we have modulation, and this is definitely beyond the scope of this tutorial, but just know that that is there. We have setup. So with this, we can do a lot of things. We can control how velocity is gonna affect playback of our sample. We can create choke groups. So if I, right now these are all gonna be set to kit, but if I come to one, and click on the pencil tool, I'll call this test. So I've created a choke group called test that I've placed the snare in. If I come to 
our longer sample here. Let's add that to the test group. So so uh, as our trigger, now you can see since it's in this choke group, the snare will stop the playback of that. And alternatively, the, the chord will stop the playback of the snare. Now we have articulation. So if we activate this, let me be sure I have this correct cell selected. Okay, now let's activate. So we can create articulation for our snares, hats, or whatever sound that we'd like. We can control the dynamics and the speed. We have, I'll power that off. We have a MIDI echo. We have humanize. We then have an editor here for working with our sample. Um, by default, we start off in the loop mode so we can add a loop. And let's set that here. Let's come to our longer one. and add the loop on this one. And you wanna be sure that you're adjusting. When you, okay, so see we're adjusting the start marker here. So you wanna be sure that we're working with the loop. We'll pull that out. Now when I click and hold, let's pull this in a little bit. We can take our count for the loop up to say seven, we'll make that really small, start playback. And we're gonna continue to loop for the count that we set here. We can create a crossfade to get rid of those clicks that we were hearing. We can tune, pan, and adjust the volume of our samples that we have loaded here. And um, then we have a wave editor here so whatever we set our edit range to when we set our edit range we want to have this bracket if we have the arrows we're adjusting the start or end marker when we have the bracket we're adjusting our edit range now wherever we place our edit range we can then make use of these functions down below so if we would like to crop to this one portion we can press crop we can undo with this back arrow we can uh, cut, copy, paste. We can normalize, introduce a fade in. I'll undo that, fade out. And when we are moving our edit arrow, edit range, this is gonna snap because snap is on. It's gonna snap to zero crossings to try to um, alleviate any pops or clicks. Uh, and we are about two minutes over our time, but I'm going to keep going for another couple of minutes. So uh, we have these play controls. If we press the full, it's going to play back the full sample. If we press the range, it's going to play back only the edit range. We can loop, loop that edit range as well. We can load multiple samples. So if we'd like to have two or three different snares or kicks in a cell, we can load more here. We can uh, just right click on that and then add a new layer. And let's move on to the master and we're pretty much finished. So here we have, whatever we have selected up above here, we're gonna see the controls for that. So these are discrete. So while we're on the master, if I say adjust the filter, take that all the way up. When I come to bus four, we can see that this is completely different. So these controls are gonna change depending on what you have selected up above. And then we already saw our reverb and delay. We've got saturation, more for working with transients, and we've got a limiter. And as we saw with the effects tab, the effects in this section can be reordered as well by clicking on the grid in the upper right-hand corner. All right, 
so this actually turned out to be about 25 minutes, but we covered a hell of a lot in this tutorial. So I hope this has been useful for you. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those below. And thanks for watching.